Hello everybody, this is Jack Dennis and welcome to our fly fishing and tying channel. I hope you're all having a good start to the new year and out tying a lot of flies. Uh, we started uh, a couple weeks ago with our Jack Dennis and Friends fly tying session. Uh, our first one was with uh, Dave Allison and I'm going to be showing you some from the past. One of the things I've been involved with uh, my fly tying career is setting up fly tying theaters and been involved with the many conclaves that fly fishing groups and clubs have over the country. And they uh, really highlight tires that you may not have ever met. And one of the best ones is ones in Idaho, both the Western Idaho Expo and the uh, Eastern Idaho Expo, which is in Idaho Falls. Uh, they've been doing these fly tying get together for a long time. We're talking over 30 years. So I want to do some highlights from some that I filmed in 2009 and 2010. And you'll get a chance to meet some names you know, and some, maybe some names you didn't know. And one of the nice things about tying at these expos is all the uh, excitement and sounds of people going around telling lots and lots of fly fishing stories. Most of them may be exaggerated. But one of the nice things about the theater is you get a chance to listen to the tires talk about it, their experiences uh, and, and answer questions. I, I think you're going to enjoy them. Uh, we're going to start this uh, week with uh, uh, several. Uh, we'll try to give you the most information. And I know some of you are going to say, wow, you know, I don't know about the materials. Well, these are really uncut. So, you know, you do your best on figuring it out. But I think you're going to enjoy the interaction uh, with the crowd and with the tires. And really, uncut un and, I think, extremely fun. Let's get going. Hi, I'm Marty Howard from Heber, Utah, here to tie some steelhead flies today. And uh, we're going to go through some, just the basics of steelhead fly tying with some hair wings and some different patterns that I use as close as the Salmon River here in Idaho. So let's get started. Now we'll, they should be announcing that here in just a second. Okay, I'm going to go down the back and check these. Right. It shows. Joseph's going on here. Okay. All right, thanks, Jeff. At least we got, we got uh, video. I'm going to go find out. Jitter's coming from. Is that me moving around? All right, we're going ahead. All right, let's get started. What I'm going to be tying here first is just a standard hair wing steelhead pattern. These are normally fished for summer fish, uh, and it's a very old traditional type fly. Uh, as with the tradition, I start almost all my flies with a tag. And so to begin, I start the thread right at the bend of the hook. And thread, thread control is like key when you're tying any fly, really. The less thread that you can put on a hook, the better. So now what I'm doing, I'm just taking some flat tinsel, securing that on the back of the hook, and then we're just going to wrap that tinsel down the bend of the hook, making sure I'm not overlapping. and making sure that the, each turn butts up next to the, to the last. And then when I get to the area where I want to stop, I just start making the turns back to where we started. And this move's called down and back, and I use it a lot on steelhead flies. So we've taken that tinsel 
down and back. We've got a nice tag. And I'm also going to control the amount of tag and surplus material here to make sure that there's no bulges or anything left in the fly. I want a really good transition from the tag to the body. Okay, so the next thing what I'm going to do is tie in a tail. And for the majority, again, of steelhead flies that I tie, I use golden pheasant, either the tippet or the crest. So I'm just going to clip some fibers off this tippet. This is dyed a hot pink. And just be careful to make sure they don't come unraveled and stay straight. I'm going to just take that tail in and put it right on top. And then I'm going to gauge this so it's just barely hanging out past the bend of the hook. Gauge with my right hand, secure with my left, and then just make some securing wraps, keeping those fibers all on top, and I've got my tail. Then I can just take my thread forward, trapping down my excess, and I just throw in a half hitch now, and I'll get rid of my thread for a minute. This material that I'm using next, it, it's Flexi Floss, Uni Flexi Floss, and it's, it's a really neat material. It's, it's a synthetic, and you can use it it's a floss, but you can actually use it as a tying material as well. I'll just now just bring that down, and that'll give me kind of an underbody as I bring that down to the bend. And then for the rib, I'm going to use just a mylar pearl rib, and that will go in on the back of the hook and now I just take that floss down to our joint of the tail and the tag. Now this floss can tighten up on you so just a counterclockwise spin will help that unravel and lay flat for you. And what I'm doing here is I'm just building up a, a small section of body with the floss. The rear one-third will be floss and then the rest of the fly is going to be dubbed. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this floss right here as my dubbing loop to get my dub body. I like, I like mixing it up a little bit with my steelhead flies, a little bit of color, a little bit of black, a little bit of natural. And so what I'll do here is I'll just take a needle and split that floss. And now I've got a loop. And then I'll just insert my dubbing in that split. I'm going to do a two-tone body here. So the first, first color is the hot pink, and then I'm going to add some black. And now to secure this dubbing, I'm just going to spin my bobbin. But before I get too wild with this, I'll take and I'll hold this and spin my bobbin and let that floss tighten up. And then when I let go, it'll put a spin in that dubbing and bind that butt dubbing down. Then I can just go ahead and get another good spin on that bobbin. until it's all tightened down. And now I've got something to hold on to. And I'll just bring that dubbing forward. All the way up to the front of the fly. And there we go. So we've got a third of the floss, a third of hot pink dubbing, and a third of the black. And then with most of my steelhead flies, I 
tradition and put five turns of ribbing in. So I count my turns, one, two, and then as I start to come up through this dubbing, I pull pretty tight and that mylar is gonna stretch a little bit. Three, four, five turns. And I want that mylar or any rib to end up on the bottom of the hook. Take and just now catch that. And then before I go too far, I'll just take some Velcro and a couple hits of Velcro will pull that dubbing out and give me a nice ratty body here. And we're looking good. And what I'll do is I'll just put a half hitch again get rid of this floss, go back to my tying thread. So I'll get rid of that, get rid of my rib, connect my tying thread back on. And I'm ready to go. Now anytime, anytime you're tying these, these flies and you're using heavy dubbing like this, you'll start to get some flyers coming out the front and I can't stand that in a finished fly. I like to have this all clean up front. So what I'll do is very carefully take a lighter and pinch down on the thread so I don't burn the thread. And then I'll just curl those flyers back to clean that head up before I go any further. So now that I've tamed that down, I'm ready to go with my hackle. And what I'm going to collar this fly with is just a slopping hackle. And I've taken and I've stripped off all the fluff off one end. And I've gauged the length of the fibers so that the, they come down just shy of the point of the hook. And then oh, I go about a, a hook length for the amount of fibers. So I'll gauge again the length pull those fibers back and then I'll clip the tip off here into a small wedge and that wedge is what I'm tying down. You want to try to tie down on the side of the hook. If you, if you tie that hackle in on top it has a tendency to slip out when you pull on it. So if you tie it in on the side you get a, a better bind and then a couple good pulls to make sure that's going to stay in. And then I'm going to fold those fibers back on the stem so they're all facing back before I make my turns. And then just one turn in front of the last. All the way up. Try not to crowd the eye. And there again, I'm going to try to end that hackle stem on the bottom. And you can see by stripping those fibers off, I'm not trapping any fibers as I'm tying that, securing that stem in. So it's just stem. And that way I can keep the front of the fly clean, have all the fibers flowing back. And I'm ready to move on. So I clip my stem. going to build up just a small base of thread for the wing. And the wing on this fly is going to, it's black bear, but you can use any hair uh, from goat to calf tail, polar bear if you're lucky, and uh, just put a wing, wing on top of that. So I take my black bear and I'll clip a, a, a chunk of this off and then I'll clean it real well by holding onto the tips and pulling pulling those fibers off so I'm using just the guard hairs and all the same and then I tips first into the hair stacker a couple good wraps with the stacker to get those all in line and you've got your wing for this fly. So there's my hair wing and here again I'm going to gauge with my right hand and I want it to come back almost in line with the, the barb 
Gauge with the right, control with the left, cut to length. And then I'm going to lay that right on top and make one good, firm securing wrap. And here you want to be right to the threshold of the strength of that thread. You want to really bind this down. Build up a small head. Not a whole lot of thread, just a nice small head. And whip finish. And I, you know, I build the, these heads up pretty good with head cement, so I don't worry about putting more than just one whip on. So one good whip finish, and then a drop of head cement. And you've got the workings of a nice standard hair wing steelhead fly. And then I'll let this I'll let this head cement dry and put sometimes two or three coats on. Now if I've got any, I think we're okay there. If I've got any major flyers, I've got another tool here that I use just to clean it up a little bit. But you've got to be careful with this, especially when it's. And I better not maybe better not do it. But when your head cement's wet, you don't want to do this because it'll start on fire. This is just a, a little cauterizing tool that I can come in now and clean any little fibers off. And you've got just a fast, quick, and easy hair